Okay, let's get started. Um, so the agenda for this week is to talk about development and plasticity, how brains get wired up in infancy and childhood and how they change in adulthood. And this is sort of an outline for the for today and Wednesday. I'm not sure exactly where we'll leave off. Actually, I think we'll be I'll be impressed if we get through uh, through the the face stuff. We'll see how it goes. We're going to start today with one of the biggest questions human beings have ever asked themselves. They've been asking themselves versions of this question um, for millennia, and that is, where does knowledge come from? Okay, how do we know what we know? Where does it come from? And all of that is deeply relevant to how much of it we can trust and how solid is it, okay? Um, and many, many people have written about this and thought about this for a long time, but just to remind you of the most rudimentary basics, there was a whole school of philosophy, um, uh, the empiricists, who argued that all knowledge comes ultimately from experience, right? Through the senses, stuff you experience in, with your sensory apparatus from the outside world, that's how you know everything you know. Okay, and so there were lots of versions of the empiricists, but most famously the British empiricists Locke and Hume and their, their buddies, okay? And so if you think about that, there's a lot of problems with that view. Many people have thought about that and, and come up with many problems with that view. Uh, but perhaps most famously, uh, Immanuel Kant wrote in the 1700s that experience alone is not enough to explain all the stuff we know. And so um, he argued that in order to be able to use experience, we must have some a priori, that is some pre-existing uh, conditions, some kind of structure in our mind that enables us to assimilate that experience, right? So how do you, how do you know what to do with that experience unless there's some structure to kind of bring it into, okay? And so um, he talked in particular about the examples of space and time as pre-existing structures uh, that must be in the mind in order for us to make use of experience. So in, in his words, he said, space is nothing but the form of all experiences of outer sense. And it can be given prior to all actual ex perceptions and so exist in the mind a priori um, and can contain prior to all experience principles which determine the relations of these objects. Okay, so he's saying, in order to make sense of and incorporate all this sense data, we must have some kind of pre-existing structure in our minds. He's just inferring this from sort of first principles and that space is gonna be key to that, okay? Um, okay, so that's nice, but is that just empty philosophical gobbledygook? Um, no, it's not. In fact, arguably, it's an empirical question in some sense. And so that's what we'll be doing here is looking at what I think of as the kind of strongest way to approach these big, deep, long-standing questions with actual empirical data. And you'll see that to do that, we need to ask very particular versions of those questions and that ultimately it's not gonna be incredibly satisfying because you know I promised you guys I would take you straight to the cutting edge and we will do that today. We will end up straight at the cutting edge and the cutting edge, uh, frankly, is kind of a mess. Like nobody knows what's going on. That's why it's cutting edge. So we'll go there and it will be confusing. And I had a hell of a time. I tried to come up with a final slide that synopsizes, okay, so what is the answer? And basically we just don't know. But there's a lot of cool experiments where people have gotten insights about pieces of this problem. So I'll take you on that journey today. Okay. Uh, and Wednesday we'll have perhaps slightly more satisfying actual data that speak to Kant's question about the innateness of representations of space, and maybe slightly more satisfying than some of the stuff that I'll talk about today. Um, okay, so the, the version of this question that I wanna start with today is which aspects of mental structure are innate uh, and which ones are learned, okay? So, um, so I've been talking for some time about this picture of the visual parts, the high level visual parts of the brain, where we have cortical regions that are specialized for processing certain visual features, like color and shape and motion, and other regions that are specialized for processing certain categories of stimuli, like faces and places and bodies, okay? So if you just look at this and think about it for a minute and ask, oh, and, and as I've mentioned, these regions are in roughly the same place in every subject, right? We could pop any of you in the scanner and make a map and it would look kind of like that, 
It'd be muckier than that, because real data don't have nice, neat ovals, but it'd be basically recognizably like that, with that same relative position of all of these regions. So if you just look at that and ask yourself, how would a biological system wire up all this precise structure that's the same in everybody? How could that happen? How could you possibly design a biological system with genes and experience and all the rest to produce an adult state like this? That's really the question we're after in here. And so you might think, God, if it's the same in everybody, doesn't it have to be innate? Or you might think, well, we all have similar experience. A lot of this stuff might be in the structure of the world that comes in through our sensoria, and somehow that structure of the world gets detected in the brain uh, and produces this organization. Okay, everybody feel in the grip of this? Okay, how many of you feel right now like a lot of that, this has to be innate? Raise your hand. No, no shame in it. Yeah, that's my hunch too. You look at this and you go, oh my God, like really? Like that's just going to self-organize out of, you know, random input into the brain or not random, structured input into the brain? Really? Doesn't seem that likely. Seems like a lot of this must be innate. I'll give you some arguments today why probably a lot of it is not innate. Okay? I mean, something is, but something isn't. <laughs> 